Hey guys, so in this video, we're going to be learning about, once again, the Boolean operators and just talking about Boolean in general. But in this video specifically, we're going to be looking at a few uh, cool examples where Boolean is easily used. So let's actually look at a very simple example. So how do I tell whether or not a number is positive or... Okay, so let's say I wanted to take in a number, so we might take in some piece of input, and then I wanted to say, you know, is it positive? Is it positive, even or odd? Is it negative, even or odd? So for example, if we had the number two, well, this number two is even, and it's also positive. So we might print this number is positive, this number is a positive even number. If we take three, for example, then we might say this is a positive odd number. If we have negative three, we might say this is a negative odd number. And if we had negative two, we might say we have a negative even number. So how might we be able to do this? And the way we're going to do this is we're going to use a few if statements as well as else if statements as well. So first, let's take in some input. So we might say, for example, uh, b, so let's say num is equal to the casted integer of the input. And in the input, we might just say, please enter any whole number. And we're going to click enter, right? It's going to prompt us to take in any whole number. And we might say, like, for example, five. Now with five, I'm going to expect that this is going to give me a um, positive odd number. So let's do that. So we're basically just going to say a few conditions. So how do we check if it's a positive number? Well, all we have to do is say if num is greater than zero. And that'll tell us whether or not the number is positive. Now, how do I check whether or not it's even or odd? Well, an even number is defined as divisible by two without any remainders, right? So if we can divide it successfully by two and not have any remainders, then that's going to be an even number. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to say and. Now, the reason we need to say and here is because this is, this is going to have to be true and whatever here also has to be true for the whole thing to be true, right? And if we had or then only one of them had to be true. But we're very trying, we're trying to very like restrict the constraints for this if condition. So if num is greater than zero and we have num modulus two is equal to zero, then what we can do is say print this number is positive and even. Now, how do we check whether or not if it's positive or, or odd? Well, what we can do is we can write an else if, right? This is otherwise, if this is not true, then let's check something else. Let's check whether or not num is greater than zero. So once again, positive. And num mod two, how do I check whether or not a number is odd? Well, if I'm dividing something by two, it's only gonna have a remainder of either zero or one. And so if the remainder in this case is just a one, right? Then I can just print this number is positive and odd. All right, so now we have the conditions for positive, even, and odd. How do we check if a number is negative and even? Well, we can apply the same logic. We can just say L if num is less than zero and num mod two is equal to zero. Well, in this case, all we have to say is print this number is negative and even. Now, obviously, because there's only four total conditions, positive, even, and odd, negative, even, and odd, we can probably use an else statement. Now, if you really want to be clear in your code, then you might want to write L if, and you say num is less than zero, and num mod two is equal to one. So if it's negative and it's odd, just simply print out this number is negative and odd. And this will successfully give you all four conditions of whether or not this number is even positive or odd. 
or negative. Um, so that's pretty much it, the four conditions. Let's click enter, and we can see that five is a number that is positive and odd. Okay, so the next example that we're gonna look at is telling whether or not a year, given a specific year, whether or not it's a leap year or not. So a leap year is basically a year with, instead of 365 days, it has 366. And basically the reason that occurs is because actually a year is defined as um, 365.25, right? And so every four years, we add those 0.25 ups, and then we give it, we have an extra day. Um, and that usually happens on February 29th. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, first of all, let's take an input for a year. And the year that we're going to take in is going to be converted into an integer. And so let's say here, please enter a year. So please enter a year. Well, the year I want to take an input for is, for example, 1900. Or let's actually say 20, 2004. Okay, so 2004 is indeed a leap year. Now, how do we check whether or not a year is a leap year or not? Well, the way we're actually going to check if a year is a leap year is whether or not it's divisible by 4 and not divisible by 100, or it's fully divisible by 400. So those are actually the three conditions that we have, or the basically two conditions that we have, of whether or not a number or a year is a leap year or not. Now, how do we write this? Well, let's see. So the first condition is whether or not it's divisible by 4. So to check if it's divisible by 4, we divide it by 4 and check the remainder. Now, not every year that's divisible by 4 is a leap year. So for example, 1900, that's not a leap year. Now, the reason it's not a leap year is because it's divisible by 100. And so we need to actually check whether or not the year mod 100 does not equal to 0. So it's not divisible by 100. So this is one of the conditions, or we can have it so that year mod 400 is equal to zero. So that's another possible condition for whether or not a year is a leap year or not. Now, we actually didn't need the parentheses around here, because if you remember, and is evaluated first, and then it's the or. So this entire thing would be evaluated first, and then it would be evaluated with this. So just remember, NAO, that's the uh, order in which Boolean expressions are evaluated. So in this case, we might print yes. This year is a leap year. And otherwise, because you know there's not really any other condition, so we can just write else, then we can say, no, this year is not a leap year. So if we click enter, we can see, yes, this year is a leap year. All right, great. So that's pretty much the two examples that I wanted to show you guys um, regarding if statements and how we might be able to use them very powerfully. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few examples of code and see whether or not they're the same or not. So for example, if we had a number b and let it equal to 10, and we're gonna have a few if statements. So we're gonna say, if b is greater than zero, then we might say, do something. Now, you might be seeing this hashtag here and you might be wondering, what exactly is this hashtag? Well, this is actually a comment and what it does is it allows the computer to just not process this, basically. It doesn't read this as a piece of code, instead it just sees it as a comment. And usually for programming, you might want these so that when other people read your code, they can see what exactly is going on. So for example, in this one, I might have, write, I might have written hashtag, uh, this is a piece of code that evaluates a leap year or not. Okay, so if b is greater than zero, do something. And we might say otherwise, do something else. And I think I might have, yeah, 
Okay, so if B is greater than zero, uh, we'll actually print something. We'll say B is greater than zero. And we might say otherwise, B is not greater than zero. Now, obviously you can see here that B, since it's equal to 10, is in fact greater than zero. Now, what if we did something like this? If B is greater than zero, let's actually just copy this for ease. And instead of else, what if we wrote if B is less than or equal to zero? Oh, let's see here, invalid syntax. What did I do? Oh, okay, sorry about that. If B is greater than zero, then we might print B is greater than zero. And we actually need to put this on another uh, branch because essentially what if you do, if if you click enter and then to the shift it to the left, then it thinks that this is part of this, or sorry, this is part of this, but it's not actually branching off of it. So we're gonna have to say if B is less than or equal to zero, print B is not, or we can say B is less than or equal to zero. And you can see that nothing is printed out here. So basically, what was the what was going on here, right? So you can kind of see that these are kind of the same, but in the general sense, what you actually wanted to do here is you want you might have written you might have wanted to write an else if instead of an if. Because if in fact both of these conditions were true, in this case, they were not, but basically, if they were both true at the same time, then it would be printing out both of them, right? But in this general case, that did not happen. But in later uh, cases, you might want to check out for this. Okay, so now let's jump into Turtle and see a few examples of where we can use if statements to our advantage. All right, so now we're back with our little friend Bob here, uh, the Bob the Little Turtle. So this is where we left off last time with using turtle, and we basically learned about how to use integer input. Now let's actually use that integer input to customize our turtle, or what Bob does, in order to allow us to create these cool and more modular um, programs. So we might say, how much will Bob paint? Um, but let's not move, let's not worry about that for now. So let's actually erase this. And let's actually, for example, let's say we wanted to change the color, the background color of our program. Um, so what the way we're gonna do that is we can actually do it multiple ways. Uh, we can do it directly. We can just write some uh, letters here and there and then for example, just um, set it to that background color. But essentially what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna actually say, um, let's see. So basically let's first take an input for a color. So let's say color is equal to input. And we're gonna say, please enter a background color. And we can fully customize this background color to anything we would like. Now. We have a few conditions. Let's say, for example, um, if color, um, let's say if color is, for example, blue, then we might want to say, for example, um, turtle dot bg color background color, and we might say is equal to blue. Now, what happens if the color that we put in or that we inputted was red, for example? Well, we can say elif color is red. Then we might say turtle.bg color red. And we might say elif color is green. Then we might say turtle.bg color um, green. Now, we have a we have a sort of different other colors. Um, let's say they inputted something wrong. Then we can say, 
these are only the three selections that we have so far, um, but we want to say if they input anything else, then please enter another, or let's say this color was wrong, no background color was set. So we might say um, invalid background color. Um, no color was set. Okay, so that's going to be our if else, um, or basically our logic control for the background. And now let's say we wanted to change the color of the, the pen that we want to draw. So in this example, I actually want to draw a circle and I want to fill it with different colors, uh, different pen sizes and all that. So the way we're going to do that, for example, is we might say, um, now let's take in the pen color. So let's say pen color, and we might actually change this to BG underscore color, uh, just so that we're clear with what exactly this color is. So let's say this is our pen color, and let's say we took in it as input. So please enter a pen color. And we might say, for example, if pen underscore color is, for example, purple, then we might change it to purple. So the way we're going we're gonna to change that is we're going to say, hey, Bob, can you please change your pen color to purple? And we'll say, yeah, sure, that works. Now, let's say uh, the pen color was blue. Then let's change it to blue. So Bob, can you put, or can you change your pen color uh, to blue? Let's say if he put in red for the pen color, um, then we might put red. So Bob.pen color is red now. And then otherwise, or let's say another one, for example, is green. Then we might change the Bob, or we might give Bob a pen color of color green. Now, otherwise, we might say, all right, well, there's no really default color, uh, but let's say otherwise, if he inputs anything else, um, then we're going to say, for example, um, invalid color, color was set to white by default. So let's say that, and we're going to say, Bob.pen color white. So that's going to change his uh, pen color to white if he inputs anything other than purple, blue, red, or green. Okay. So now let's say um, we wanted to take in what is the, for example, fill color, because when I draw a circle, I can actually fill it any size or any color I want. So let's say fill underscore color is equal to input. And let's say, please enter a pun color, or sorry, a fill color. And what we can say is if fill color is, for example, orange, then we might set it to orange, for example. Bob dot, uh, for example, fill color, we might say is orange. Now let's say we wanted to only restrict it to orange, or restricted to some other color. Well, we can say if fill color is orange, then set it to orange. But otherwise, if he says anything else, right, then we might say bob.fill color is nothing. Or we can say it's some other default color that we want. So for example, red. So now he only actually has two options to choose from. He only has orange or red. So if he inputs orange, then it becomes orange. But if he inputs red, or any other color like blue, green, purple, then it still becomes red. Okay, so how do we actually make this color now? But actually before that, let's also take in the input of what is the size of my circle. So let's say circle size or circle radius is equal to the int input of the prompt. So the reason we need to make it an integer is because the circle, the radius of the circle that we're going to take in is actually going to be of type integer. So we're going to ask it to say, please enter the radius of our circle or of Bob's circle. 
And we might say, you know, very simply, Bob dot circle uh, circle radius. Now, this isn't entirely how we do it. So let's actually do it properly. So the way we're going to do this first is we're going to say, um, actually, let's take in the pen size as well. So pen size is equal to, please enter the pen size like so. And now we can start actually writing our code properly. So let's say, for example, the first thing we need to do is say, we, we need to say bob.pensize is whatever the pen size we inputted. So we're basically telling Bob, all right, change to the pen size of the input that we put in. All right, then what we need to do is we need to set the speed. So for example, we might set the speed to, I don't know, five. And then we can start filling our circle in. So we're, we're gonna say, Bob, can you begin filling something in? And also, can you say, draw a circle with a radius of this specified size? So circle underscore radius. So let me break this up a bit. And then we wanna say, Bob, can you stop or end filling your circle? And that's pretty much it. So that's pretty much all we have to do for customizing our own kind of, um, you know, circle here. So if we run this module, so let's save it first. And oh, we see that there's a few errors here. Okay, so you can see that the is only kind of works with numbers. So we're actually gonna change it to equals equals, my mistake. So first of all, each of these is should be equals equals. And that is my fault. Okay, so there we go. Now we can successfully run the module and there's no errors. So the first thing that we need to do is set a background color. So let's say our background color was blue. And you can already see that the background color just changed to blue. Okay, then please set a pen color. Um, let's say our pen color was purple. Please enter a fill color, so we might say orange. Enter the radius of Bob's circle, we might say 90. The pen size, for example, we might say is 10. And then as you can see, it's running in the background. It created a circle with a background of blue, a pen color of purple, and a fill of orange. Okay, so in this video, you pretty much uh, learned how to use if statements to your own control and how to draw a circle with your own customizable uh, colors, shapes, sizes, and all that.